you so much for coming into today's event. Uh, my name is David Penham, an American English teacher from New Jersey, right now living in Mexico and in the state of Tlaxcala, and I host English and Spanish events for people. Today I have a good friend and co-host, Angela Migo. She is an engineering student from Mexico City, and today we will be talking to you guys about the history and the influence uh, that Mexico has in the field of robotics. All right, so we're going to give you, we're going to show you guys a couple of presentations. We have a slide prepared for you guys. All right, just remember to keep your your microphones on mute for the moment. You will be able to ask questions in English and Spanish at the end of the event. We'll be happy to answer questions, any comments that you guys have at the end. So without any further ado, all right. Um, well, before we get started, Andy, would you like to introduce yourself to the group, please? Um, just as David said, I'm, uh, I'm Andy from Guadalajara. I'm currently in Guadalajara. I'm about to finish my computer science engineer career. And I'm really excited to be here with you today. Um, I normally you do Spanish events, just like I said, Stuart is one of my regulars. So this should be interesting. I'm actually pretty, pretty pumped to talk about uh, robotics since it's a uh, it's a field of STEM that I think uh, is really important to to get to know because when we think in robotics we almost also all all the time think in Japan or or other European countries Asian countries so it's important to to share what we in, in Latin America especially in Mexico have to offer yeah so I'm really excited. I think I thank David for inviting me, and let's get going. Sure. All right. So um, you can share the screen whenever you feel ready, and let's get started. Oh, and also just to clarify, by no means we're saying that other countries are not doing as well. Actually, as we do know, maybe you know. Japan is a powerful country also in the field of robotics. So is the US. There are two countries that do very well as, as well as others. There is also a robotics team in Canada and so forth. Okay. But how, however, and we're not, you know, despising any country or, or their efforts. We're just actually you know, trying to share, you know, what Mexico has done, uh, you know, in, in robotics. And that's, you know, up to a point, almost sadly, not a lot of people, even people from Mexico, know about it. So today's presentation is about, you know, gives, shining some light on these things. All right, there we go. Thank you. Yes. So today's presentation starts off with us both. It's titled Robots a la Mexicana, a Duolingo events presentation by Andy Lamego and me, David Pena. So we hope to enjoy this presentation and have fun with us. Today we'll be looking at the amazing stories and history of robotics in Mexico. All right, so what is the field of robotics about? According to Google, it is defined as the branch of technology that deals with the design, construction, operation, and application of robots. And why is it this important? Because believe it or not, Mexico has an impressive record when it comes to robots and robotics competition. Normally, people think of countries like Japan, China, the US, and others. However, Mexico has a record of increased sales of 119% in 2015. Many robotics engineers and designers working overseas are Mexican. Let's dive into some cool stories together. So the first part is a story called Spare Parts, the story of the Carl Hagen High School and the 2004 underwater robotics team. So this is the story of four teens, sons of undocumented immigrants, two great teachers, and one sort of weird robot defeating college teams, including MIT in the underwater robotics competition. The Carl Hagen High School Falcon Robots team located in Phoenix, Arizona, is where it all started. Both teachers, Fardoni Labergy and Alan Cameron, 
sell the value of education in pulling students out of poverty, and preach to students about the value of education. The four students are Lorenzo Santiana, Luis Aranda, Oscar Vasquez, and Christian Arcega. They all faced sorts of difficulties and stigma. Their teachers had always planned for them to enter a competition against colleges. They figured that because it was Carl Hagen's first time in a competition like this, they would probably lose. And losing against colleges wouldn't hurt as much, they figured. So that is that they were going to lose. They should lose in a spectacular fashion. However, actually, they, they won first place. This high school competed against other colleges, like we mentioned, MIT and others. And they actually won with this particular uh, curious robot. This, uh, this story was later made into a movie called Spare Parts. All right? And it tells a little bit about you know, how this team came to be. The, the movie is not 100% accurate. There were some liberties taken. But in general, the, the movie does portray many facts that took place you know, about this particular story. So you know, it, it's an amazing story about you know, students coming together you know, with maybe a background that isn't the most spectacular, the most academic, but they came together, you know, they, they put their minds to work, they built a robot, they participated, and they show you know, the, the talent you know, as people you know, who, with parents coming from the U.S. and you know, come over, the, um, I'm sorry, people coming from, with parents coming from Mexico and you know, going to the U.S. and migrating and so forth, you know, they overcame a lot of those things and came together to design a robot. And you know, not make not only make their schools proud, but also their families and the community proud. Yeah, and for the next story, we have the secondary students win all the top prizes at robotics competition. One of the students big winners at the World Educational Robot Contest. Mexican robotics students in the 2019 World Educational Robot Contest in Shanghai, China on December 14 and 15. All top prizes in the secondary level competition went to Mexican robotics team, all from Guanajuato, comprised of pre-computing and mechatronic students from the Conalep Technical College of Silao. Team Robocon took home first place in the secondary competition. Second place went to Team Alpha Maravilla, comprised of students from the School of Scientific and Technological Studies, El CCT, in Comfort, while the Storm Bots team of the Advanced System of Secondary and Superior Education, SABES, school in San Jose Parangueo, took home third place. In the primary level competition, the team from Celaya, Guanajuato, won first place. Second place was taken by students from the English American School of Monterrey. The World Contest is organized by the World Education and Robotics Society, which held its first competition in 1994. It is considered the Olympics of robotics competitions for students 8, 3 to 18. Each year, over 500 to 5,000 students compete in the World Education and World Contest. World level winners receive scholarships and have significant advantage in university admission, some even being directly admitted to elite universities. The sources were El Financiero from Forbes, Mexico. And this, and this contest really helps to, to win scholarships in, in, in the schools that they par participate and also re looks really good in the curriculum, to be honest. Yes. And we have Mexican students win gold at robotics tournament in Turkey. All right, we have a picture there. All right, so Mexican students won gold, silver, and bronze at the KSU uh, Technorob tournament in Turkey. I, I hope I pronounced that correctly. So competing with more than a thousand students from six countries, we have Luis Cortez Hernandez, Adán de la Cruz Dominguez from Mexico's National Institute of Technology, known as TechNM. Costa Rica campus won the first three places in the mini sumo category. They also won first place in the autonomous sumo competition with a robot called Boris X. The second KSU tournament organized by the, uh, this is a Turkish name, so, Kaharama uh, Namas Sukunima University. I'm sorry, this is a Turkish name. I have no 100% idea how this is pronounced. Uh, took place on May 5th, I'm sorry, May 4th and 5th in 2019 and attended by more than 1,000 students from Turkey, 
Japan, Malaysia, Romania, Tunisia, and Mexico, presenting in total 322 robots in that contest. So as you can see, this is a group of people who are you know, also making Mexico proud and their family, their parents, their communities in, you know, th this, in these tournaments that are going around worldwide. And also we have Mexican students compete in first robotics competition in Houston, Texas. Lambot 3438, a group of students from the Prepa Tech High School in the Mexican state of San Luis Potosí, has secured its place at the first robotics competition in Houston, Texas, after winning the first regional championship at the Monterey Institute of Technology. It's not called first, like it was the first contest, but because it's, it's actually the name, it's an acronym. The team members assembled a robot at the national competition and won first place. Following their remarkable results, the Prepa Tech students will now participate in their regional first competition from 14 to 16 March in Mexico City, which will serve them as training for the participation in the World Robotics Competition. The team from San Luis also won the judges award. In only eight years, the team has won 30 awards, including five that were won at the international competition, rookie all-star in 2011, Engineering Inspiration 2013, Team, Team Spirit 2014, Engineering Inspiration 2015, and the Turing Divi Division 2018. Furthermore, the students were decorated with the Eugenio Garza Sada Award in the students category last year. It's the, the Instituto Tecnológico de Educación Superior of Mon de Monterrey, in the ITESM. It's actually a very expensive school, so it's it's very common for the students there to have big scholarships and in those scholarships um, the it's almost a rule for you to be in a lot of, of of classes and competitions to stay with that scholarship so it's really common to see people from that school to to be in those kind of events because it's expected from them to to be on those Yes, and, and just like you mentioned, I, uh, I would just uh, quickly clarify here. Um, yes, we do see, for example, the title is Mexico to compete in first Lego robotics. Now, just as a, as a quick comment, we're not talking like the first competition. Actually, the, the, the acronym for first is for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. So that's what it means. We're not talking about like first, second, or third. No, that's actually the name of this robotics competition week. So first is an acronym, just like Andy mentioned. Okay, so again, it's for inspiration and recognition of science and technology, and it was founded by Dean Kamen. All right, so two robotics teams represent Mexico in the first Lego League World Championship tournament held in Houston, United States. So both squads from the CyberTots Toluca Robotics School in the state of Mexico qualified for the World Championship after winning first and second place at the first LEGO National League Championship, which took place here in Monterrey. The team CBRS Space Explorer won the first place, and Cyberbot Space won second. The National Championship of the 2018-2019 season, held at the faculties of the University of Monterrey, Universidad Regiomontana, was attended by 43 teams from Chihuahua, Coahuila, and Guanajuato, as well as Mexico City, Hidalgo, Nayarit, Nuevo León, the state of Mexico, Puebla, Yucatan, Veracruz, Tabasco, and Sonora. The director of Robotics X, Roberto St. Martin, said in a statement that is in the current season of 2018-2019 that they are working with more than 5,000 boys and girls from all over the country, in addition to the first and second place. Other 10 teams will participate in the first LEGO League friendly tournament to be held in Turkey, Uruguay, Australia, the United States, and Lebanon. And also we have women, women in robotics. There are many women who have made great contributions to the world of robotics and STEM, we will see a couple of them in the following slides. Their work has inspired boys and girls alike and have served as leading scientists and engineers.
So starting off, we have the Vex Robotics World Championship. So this is in Saltillo, Coahuila. Gabriela Lagunas, Monica Flores, Martha Hernandez, Mariel Gomez, Daniela Banda, and Alejandra Cavazos, students of Tecnológico de Monterrey, went all the way to Kentucky, USA, to represent Mexico in this championship. They were the only team conformed solely by women to do so. Right. So you can see a picture of these uh, you know, six student girls and pictures of, of their robotics team that went over there in Kentucky. The next story is about Cristina Diaz, a system engineer, making her way to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Born in Los Angeles, but from Mexican parents, Cristina went to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, where she majored in aerospace engineering. When she was finishing graduate school, GPL came to the career fair looking for engineers. She brought her A game and it got her an interview, which led her to a job offer. She now works on the Mars 2020 project and rovers. So next, she started with robots and she is going further. In Silvia Arambula's first robotics competition, she noticed being the only girl around. So when her team won third place at the Robot Challenge in China and Robomatrix in Ecuador with fourth place, she started teaching programming to kids. She wanted to teach them that girls are equally capable of creating robots or in Sylvia's case, make 3D organs in order to help sick children. It's amazing work. And next, it's Ivana Collado, a specialist in robotics. Ivana has taken part in research studies at the Montreal Polytechnic and the Robotic Institute of Carnage Mellon in University. She is currently a student at the Monterrey campus. She has published articles in scientific journals on technology for phase identification, methods of obstacle avoidance for autonomous ships, and characterization of gestures and pupil tracking for robot assistance. Following up, we have some statistics. Now, 50 cent for 56, I'm sorry, 56 percent of the of the participants were women for the first time in Mexico at the first robotics tournament. Nine percent of girls expressed interest in STEM versus 28 percent of boys. And compared with the 38 percent of women in Mexico that work in the area. So definitely we are seeing an, an increase of girls going into STEM and into STEAM careers and the fact that there have been also a, a couple of teams, and we hope to really see them grow. We're looking at you know teams made completely by girls and women in these robotics competition, and it should not, it really shouldn't be surprising. But the fact that you know that there are small groups, but we look them, we look forward for them to be, um, you know, ever ever more growing. You know, to make sure that we have that you know equal balance between you know boys and girls, we I guess we really don't want to get into a heated debate about that. But I can definitely say that you know whether you're a boy or a girl, that should not be um, you know some sort of barrier whether or not you decide to enter STEAM or not. I think it's a wonderful career, all right. Entering you know into robotics or programming or design, you know any form of engineering, you know whether you're a boy or a girl, you know feel free and go ahead for it. So thank you so much for watching this presentation. Um, here is just a couple of pictures on the first one here in the red border. We have one of the teachers from the story of the spare parts. He was one of the, uh, one of the two teachers that inspired this group of teenagers in Arizona, Phoenix to build, I'm sorry, in Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona to build this robot. The name of the robot's actually Stinky. Uh, that was the name they gave it to the robot. And they won, you know, the, the, the underwater robotics competition with very curious uh, designs and implementations. Um, as the, the picture in the bottom, as you can see, is the team holding the robot and, you know, using it in a pool to, you know, do some experiments. And on the, on the right of that, we see one of the uh, engineers that worked on it. And right now he's working on uh, a couple of other things as well. Now, now it, you know, years past the high school experience of the Carl Hagen um, story, and you can see he's still well into engineering. And for the next slide, 
we have the contestants at the first robotic competition we in the previous stories and the yellow image to the yellow frame it's miriam juarez the team the team logistics uh, person in charge of the logistics in pink we have angela segura which is the the group president she's the group president and in red sofia martinez captain of the siberius 6017 team and they are they are all in the first competi robotics competition and the and that university and the the original images are also in their official web page so thank you for watching thank you for all of you for you know, kindly watching this presentation for us uh, we hope you enjoyed it we're going to answer some of your questions right now um, so just before we go uh, you know, just uh, as a quick summary, we just want you guys—we we want you guys to uh, to know that you know, our, our country has been doing a lot of things uh, in the field of robotics. I know that you know, with the Olympics, uh, you know, being held and so forth, um, you know, it, it's it's a wonderful time to really also showcase what our country has been doing, not only you know in sports or in other things, but you know, specifically also in the field of robotics. Like I mentioned, not a lot of people, even from Mexico, know about this. Um, you know, from times it's possible that maybe someone else from another country might know the potential of Mexican robotics. But, you know, if you regularly talk to maybe somebody who is not very familiar with this, um, you know, they, they might not really know. So, um, you know, I, I will say, you know, whenever we see a robotics competition, whenever there is a, you know, worldwide tournament or something, um, of course, we do have countries like the U.S., China, Japan, you know, coming in, you know, very strongly. But I will say this: uh, Mexico is always in the first five in the first five places, you know? and it it really shouldn't be a surprise to be like in the first three, all right. So um, it, it's something really incredible that our that, you know the country is, is is doing, and the way they're presenting engineers and the fact that we have engineers you know from Mexico or from parents who are Mexican, you know, working at NASA. Uh, working in space stations in, in Alabama, working with the robotics teams in Japan. I mean, there are many in, talented engineers, men and women working overseas, you know, representing Mexico, or, you know, they come from a Mexican background, working in all of these other countries because, you know, they are recognized that, you know, these engineers are, you know, the top thing as well. So we, we really hope you guys, you know, go home with that and, you know, have fun, understand, you know, that, that's, that's our point here to illustrate. And if you have any questions, any comments that you would like to you know, share with us or contact us for anything, you know, there is Andy Lomego. That's, uh, you can find her LinkedIn page and her events page. In case you would like to talk to me or comment anything or something, feel free to send me an email. My email is down below. All right. So uh, anything that you would like to say, Andy? Yeah, well, you pretty much summed up. Uh, it's really interesting to know what each country has to offer on um, different STEM and STEAM technolo technologies and fields. So to really get to learn in another in another areas that we are not commonly used to see on screen or in our daily daily life, it's it's really valuable for me. For for me, it's a, a really valuable thing to to get to know this and get to know what it's making the the world spin around in in the way it, it is so it's it's for example interesting to know just like just now jeff bezos that he went to space but with what technology i mean he has robots but who build those robots who build those um who build that machine who who build that and it's really interesting to get to get to know why he is there and how the how he he did it and how can we learn that with seeing these kind of of presentations and sharing this information so yeah i i agree with with david said excellent yes thank you so much it was a really good point as well um i think we can really i would like to dive into that story as well like what engineering went behind you know that famous uh, trip that he recently did you know, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of international brains working on that uh, to make it possible. All right. Um, so let's head on to questions from uh, from today's attendees and guests. All right. So, okay, Stuart, I, I see your hand. 
um, you guys can ask your questions or comments in English or Spanish, however you prefer. Um, okay. Go ahead, Stuart. Well, I think this is mainly a, an English uh, group here, so I'll, what I have to say is probably uh, I can't say in Spanish anyway. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. That was a very interesting presentation. I had no idea that Mexico was was so, you know, uh, highly developed in the robotics, at least in the schools. Um, of course, you know that robotics competitions are a big thing in Japan. They put them on national television. And people, uh, it's so exciting to watch these robots uh, kind of battle each other to perform interesting tasks. Uh, can Is it out of place for me here to make a comment about the English used in the presentation? Uh, can I suggest an improvement? All, all right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, in the section on women, women in uh, robotics, uh, I think I saw the, the sentence, uh, the team was conformed solely by women. Uh, I think that's not the proper use of, of conform. Uh, to conform is to, to agree with like a law or to um, kind of be similar to something else. Uh, I think what you wanted to say there was comprised solely. Oh, by yes. Women I... Or by women. Yeah. Comprised. Yes. Comprised. Yes. I think um, that's better than conformed solely by women. Yes, and, and I'm going to explain that one. Thank you so much for your observation. I, I totally agree with you. And as, as the English teacher, I probably uh, that, that one really slipped. <laughs> that one slipped to me. So to me, it's, you know, it hits my ear and I kind of. <laughs> yes, no. So I, I'm going to explain that one really quick. Uh, well, so thank you so much for pointing it out. Yes, it is true. Uh, I mean, when you when you mentioned it, I was like, oh, comprises the word. The same thing. I reached your conclusion as well, but just maybe a little bit late until you pointed it out. So once again, thank you for that. Yes, I, I will say that um, um, Andy, when she wrote this one, uh, she wrote comprised because in Mexico, in Spanish, we say, you know, el equipo fue compuesto por. And sometimes uh, people can really just automatically translate, you know, compuesto, composed, or, you know, or conformed. Um, yeah, and composed. Yes. And, and we work too. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's it's kind of, um, oh, what's, what's this word called? Um, it, it's, very, it's like a, kind of a cognate. Like almost a cognate. So uh, we what we were expressing is precisely that the team was comprised. It was made up uh, solely of women. All right. Mm -hmm. But I, I hope that explanation um, works for you. It was just that you know the, the word um, sounded very similar to the to the Spanish. So I just thought we I could help a little bit to make sure. the presentation a little more. Yes. Accurate. Yes. You're, all right. Yes. But you know, I appreciate that. Really Thank nice you. catch, Stuart. Yes. All right. <laughs> Okay. English teacher. <laughs> so, really nice. All right. Good. Anyone else have an, a question or a comment? Okay, Huri, I see your hand. Go ahead, Huri. Yeah, I was just wondering what what the automation industry is like in Mexico. I'm very interested in automation and using automation to eliminate labor completely so we can focus on more interesting uh, jobs in the future. All right, that's a good question. Um, Andy, would you like to answer that first, or uh, you know, you can go if you would like, or I can go. Well, actually, um, it's kind of out of my field, but I know from a fact from very um, for a group of of companies in Mexico that actually automa uh, automation automation in in Mexico is it, it's kind of relevant because. Normally, outer companies, foreign companies, bring their technologies here because the the employees, the engineers that work here, are the ones that assemble those uh, those kind of technologies, and we test that. We test that te technology so we can send it back. So we may not have all the uh, all the technology from just made here but it's it's actually a, a really profitable area from to choose and to study to work because actually it, it is a future it's uh, 
the automatization of, of things, of opening doors, of car, of driving cars and, and other stuff, it's mostly, I'm not saying uniquely, but it's mostly assembled here in Mexico and in other countries, Latin American countries. So yeah, I don't know if that answers that qu your question. Yeah, thanks. Yes, what I can say about that is, um, you know, we were really working on it. Um, I know that there are some particular plants that are working, you know, with robotics further more than other countries are, or, or you know, even other states. Um, however, uh, as with automation, I still believe that we need some more investment in that. Um, you know, I mean, we definitely do have the, the potential. We do have, you know, the necessary, you know, brain power and the engineers and the creativity here. We just probably need some more uh, infrastructure, I might say. But you know, if that's covered, you know, hey, you know, uh, automation would be just you know, way uh, way easier to to implement. Right. Oh, and um, you know, you can stop sharing your screen, Andy, so that you know we can see everybody. You know, so we can see each other's faces now. All right. Good. Um, let's see. I believe we have in the chat. In our, read the chat. Does I would like to comment? Uh, yes, uh, go ahead. If, if anyone has a comment, you you know feel free to, you know, post that uh, in the chat. All right. Anyone else have a, a, a comment or a question? All right. Oh, yeah. Ernesto. Yeah, I have a comment. Oh, okay. Well, oh, we're sorry. gonna. Yes, I saw your message first, Francisco. So go ahead, and then uh, we're gonna go with Ernesto. Okay. Thanks so much. Sure. Actually, I would like to share a comment about uh, the Steam careers that uh, Andy talked about before is you know something strange because uh, when you when someone talk about or when not, someone thinks about you know robotics on engineer or something like that mechanics you know sometimes they forget the part of mathematics in these things well actually actually i don't know how many people here uh, are related to uh, technology but I would like to share a strange comments, a strange comment about this topic because uh, when you start, when you find, when you start to do these things, in the right study, but this just tell that mechanic, uh, uh, to mathematics. You can imagine like. Uh, We're kind of losing you, buddy. Uh, could you repeat that last part? Your, your audio was not uh, clear for us. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, I have a problem. Now, the mathematics sound ill when you, when you study um, uh, robotics. The mathematics are like a rule of three. Uh, use uh, differential equations on something like that, uh, algebra, something that are really hard to, to understand. Well, uh, when you translate to engineer, it's really, really fun. You you will find that all the mathematics that you study, it's like a rule of three. Well, or, okay, really more complicated than that, but it's like the rule of three for the, the robotics. <laughs> and this, this is really fun. Okay, I think I got your idea, but y yes, um, I know we didn't make a, a big emphasis in the, in the math part of this. Um, I, I agree to that. But yes, nonetheless, um, of course it is implied when we talk about robotics, we definitely have to, you know, look at mathematics. Um, you know, in the slide we, we present, when I was doing the research on Cristina Diaz, um, you know, the girl that we presented in the slide about the, the in the NASA program from JLP, JPL, I'm sorry. Um, it, it, I, I was reading some of her biography and, you know, some of the work and the interviews that she gave. And uh, as you mentioned, yes, for her to work on that particular team, she had to take a lot of, she was in high school and she had to take like college level math classes. So she had to take, you know, advanced calculus, advanced trigonometry, advanced engineering, you know, this and that. And she was in high school. So she really had to take, you know, big steps in, in towards that. And, you know, you know, definitely, even though uh, we did not make a huge emphasis on it, it is, uh, we very much as educators imply that yes, you know, when we talk about robotics, it isn't just, you know, metal and machines and tools. No, we're talking about, you know, programming, we're talking about math, we're talking about, you know, electrical systems, we're talking about, you know, computers. In the case of people who use, you know, Raspberry Pi to program, you know, robots on, you know, with, you know, one of these uh, Linux-based systems, you know, all of that comes into play. 
and, and that's what we are so proud of because it's not something you know easily done it requires a lot of you know a, a lot of mental challenge and discipline and so forth to, to you know make it come true so yes definitely mathematics is also a huge part you know of, of this uh, of this presentation as well thank you um, Ernesto you're uh, you're up buddy what's your question or comment sure well, first of all, thank you, teacher David and Andy, for sharing this interesting information that helped us understand that Mexico is doing great in, in the robotics field. And, and my question is for you, Andy. Uh, you mentioned it, that you are about to finish your bachelor's degree in computer science. What plans do you have? Are you planning to, to do something related in this field? Do you want to, to study or pursue a master degree or something like that? Um, that's actually a really interesting question. Um, I competed once in, a, not a robotics, but in the, in the field where you program the robots, you, you program something for, a, it was for a mechatron mechatronics class, it was, just as a, for the curriculum and i'm currently i'm more in, in more focused on the on making a master's degree on video games i think it's with the it embraces it 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 has all the the themes i'm interested about like the the graphic design i'm really interested in gra graphic design i'm really interested in um, the mechanics of how VR and um, VR games are are made. So all all that technology of using gloves to to really capture the movement. It's what interests me right now. So that's the plan. But first, I have to finish. So um, yeah, I think that that would be my plan. But I I already had my taste in robotics and the next step would be video games, video game masters. Great. Well, I, I wish you the best. I think you're nice stuff. Yes, we, we all do. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else have, have a question, comment, an idea? Oh. Perhaps do you Go. have an idea? of these people that engage in robotics, you know, in school, have an idea of where they go after after all that stuff, if they go into engineering, if they go into computer science or game development, or if they also go, they stay in the country or if they leave for to the US or something? I actually have a, a friend in that was in that in the first robotics competition. Um, his name is Alberto Cortez. And yeah, he he was studying mechatronics, but then he realized he wanted to be more more involved in the in programming. So he changed to to computer systems engineering in the same school in the, the Tech de Monterrey for short, all the ITESM acronym. You can cut it out to ITESM. And he participated. He won some um, some national. Uh, competitions and now actually he's having an internship he's in an internship program in Facebook and he is looking forward for another one in Google so with all this pandemic stuff going on around um, it's actually a, a little bit easier for for mechatronic and engineers to to find jobs to find stay at home jobs home office jobs and they it's more likely for them to to stay at their at mexico and work here so that's an example i can think of think of he stayed here in mexico and he's working in another in, in a country that's not mexican so yeah it's it's about what you want to do if you want to go study abroad you can go you can you can go and if you want to stay here but still work in the in, in the area you you also make that you have to to work for it yes Thanks. that's that's a good question what i can say from from the research that i have done is the the answers actually vary because like andy said some of them 
um, once they once they have participated and so on, they, they move on to another project or they find an interest in another maybe similar field. So that has happened. Um, other students continue to work in robotics. There have been students who, you know, were coached and participated, and now they have become teachers and coaches for these other generations that are coming on. So, um, you know, that, that's how some of them have become. If we look at the story of the teens in the movie Spare Parts, you know, some of them um, had to, some, some of them continued with, uh, with the robotics, some of them stayed as teachers in their high school. I believe one of them uh, went to, started his own business. He, he does some um, engineering consulting and me uh, mechanic consulting on the side. And he decided to, po to, to establish a catering business um, because it, it was something that he wanted uh, since a child. Um, but nevertheless, he ha he really hasn't abandoned you know the the whole thing of robotics. You know, he he still coaches and teaches a little bit on the side. But um, for example, right now he has his own catering business and he focuses on that. So um, you know the, the the you know what what happens to these people is, is quite diverse, and it really it's really interesting to see you know what happens. Sometimes they do end up going on to bigger projects, or sometimes they work on their own passions and their own um, you know particular talents. Um, there, there is another movie. It's quite old. Uh, it's called The October Sky. Um, I'm not really sure if, if the movie was in, in 1999 or in the 2000, somewhere around that. Um, it starts Jake Gyllenhaal. And the movie, uh, The October Sky, is one of my favorite because it talks about um, NASA engineer Homer Hickam. It talks about how when he was in high school, he started... Uh, you know, making these rockets with his friends, you know, uh, when the space race was, you know, just about, you know, being, hitting its popularity. And he was designing rockets and so forth. He was still in high school and, you know, he had the help of his teacher and, you know, he had to take more advanced classes for math and so on. But, you know, the, the story goes on to see that, you know, his, each of his friends uh, went on a different path. They, they competed in, in a couple of things and they built rockets and, so forth, they actually made a name for themselves and for the, the place where they are. And at the end of the movie, the movie talks about what happened to these people, what happened to the teacher, um, what happened to you know the friends that built rockets together, what are, what are they doing? Some of them became teachers, some of them became bankers. Um, and in the case of Homer Hickam, which is the main character portrayed by Jake Gyllenhaal, um, hey, we, we actually see that Homer Hickam, you know, years in the future is now one of you know, NASA's engineers, and he teaches other students and so forth. And he actually does have, um, he, he, you know, uh, he's able to see his dream come to life and seeing that he now works uh, at NASA, which is something that he always wanted. Um, so it's a very good question, and it's really interesting to see what happens to these people. You know, where did they go? It's, a, it's an interesting story. Anyone? Sure. Anyone else? Actually, teacher. Yeah, teacher. Yes, go ahead, Francisco. Uh, yes, actually, the story about uh, October Sky is really similar, really close to. Uh, uh, we're we're kind of losing you. Really close to what? I'm sorry. Please repeat. Uh, it's really close to October Sky. The uh, the electronic find the the six was um, was the son of a or, um, of a people one or of a guy who worked and actually he he worked uh, his father worked for a um, really different topic. Actually, I don't remember exactly what he was. What his father was, but that, but his son studied to design uh, rockets, and actually he was one of the best the best engineers in SpaceX. Actually, the Raptor motor, the Raptor engine, and the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy, all the all the rockets that SpaceX uses, was designed for this guy. Uh, uh could could you please repeat? Well, what did you say the, the movie is similar to? Or 
because that, that first part I kind of lost. But you, you said the movie October Sky is similar to another movie called what? Not a movie. It's a true story. Oh, about, oh okay. Uh, I don't remember the name of the on the space turtles on the SpaceX. Oh, okay, okay. I think I got it. The thing is, you, you, your audio sometimes doesn't arrive really well, buddy. We we have some trouble hearing you. But I think I got the idea. So yes, is the um, I'll, I'll look into it. Yes, definitely. I mean, it really shouldn't be a surprise to us. Uh, I'm really sure that the story of like October Sky and Homer Hickam is. You know, very re relatable to a lot of engineers that are working at NASA, SpaceX, and, uh, SpaceX, and, and other um, of these, you know, aeronautics agencies. So, um, yes, thank you for also bringing that up, and you know, we, you know that that's uh, that's also part of our mission. That as educators, we really want to bring into light these amazing stories, and you know, make sure you know people get to know them, like you know, we we saw in today's uh, expo. It's, uh, it's we also we are also losing you, David. If you have a little bit of interference. Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello? Kind of, but not that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can hear you now. We all work good. All right. So, um, well, I just wanted to say thank you, really, just to wrap up. So, um, Thank you so much. Thank you for, for staying with us. And we hope you guys had fun learning about you know, robotics and you know, what Mexico has been doing in the field of engineering and programming and robotics. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Andy, for coming in and being a special guest today and hosting this event with me. All right, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed our collaboration. And I hope we can do it again sometime. All right. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you once again, Andy. I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. All right, have fun and see you next week. All right. Thank you so much, guys. It was a great um, presentation. I just wanted to say that. I couldn't comment a lot because I got a little a little late because I, I, I had a performance earlier. That's why I couldn't comment so much, but it was very interesting and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andy and David. You're sure. welcome, Diana. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Thank, you, thank you, everybody, for being here. And of course, if it's some other time, we can host again and talk about something else or robotics again. <laughs> that would be really interesting. Thank sure. you. Looking thank forward to it. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye, Take everyone. Care. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Bye.